Spotting trailers with a Kalmar Ottawa T2 terminal tractor is easier and safer when you go by the book. This video will show you how to make safety first, last and always for you, the terminal tractor and the load. Your rule book for proper and sure operation is the Kalmar Ottawa Operator's Manual. It covers more details than this video, so take time to look it over. A copy is provided in each new Kalmar Ottawa T2, and it's located in the seat back pocket. Checking the condition of your T2 is the first step you should take when you start your shift. Don't start driving until you've finished this simple walk-around inspection. From the front, look under the chassis to check for any leaks, radiator, engine, or hydraulic. Fluid leaks could leave you stranded. Check for fresh fluids on the ground before starting out. If any exist, take corrective action before proceeding. As you walk around to the right side of your T2, be sure to check the fluid levels in the hydraulic oil reservoir. The instruction labels are easy to read and the filler cap easy to reach. Then check the rear tires for proper inflation. Also check the top of the frame and fifth wheel boom area to make sure that they are free of any debris. While examining the fifth wheel, be sure to check for damage and adequate lubrication. Make sure the jaws are open and working properly. While we're on the subject of the boom, never put any part of your body under the fifth wheel boom when it is in the up position, unless the boom arms have been properly blocked against accidental lowering. As you come around to the driver's side, check the rear tires and the fuel tank. When refueling, never smoke or have open flames around. Check the battery cover to see that the cover fasteners are secure. Be sure to drain the air tank reservoirs of any moisture by pulling the lanyards. Now let's tilt the cab. Before tilting, make sure the area in front of the cab is clear and no loose objects are in the cab. Remember, keep clear of the cab when it's raising or lowering. First, pull the safety bar prop release cable to the rear. Note the warning label with the cab tilt instructions located on the frame by the cab tilt switch. While holding the cable, move the tilt control switch to the up position and hold until the safety bar prop clicks into the locked position. Next, look under the cab near the steering box to see that the cab lock bar is all the way down. With the safety guard in the proper position, the cab is prevented from accidentally closing. Never place any part of your body under a tilted cab without checking to be sure that the safety bar prop is in the locked position. Look under the deck to be sure the cab is locked down. To double check, depress the cab tilt switch momentarily to the down position. Before each shift, it's always a good idea to pull the dipsticks to check transmission and oil levels. Check the sight glass on the radiator for proper coolant level. When checking coolant, remember that it can be very hot. It's a high pressure system, so never remove the radiator cap if the engine is hot. When lowering the cab, just reverse the procedure. Note that the safety bar prop has a release lanyard, which must be pulled prior to lowering the cab. Hold the switch down, look at the button on the latch, and hold long enough for the pin to retract. When all of the inspections outside have been completed, it's time to get into the cab and start the engine. But first, check the floor and all around for any trash or loose items that could be a hazard. What you can't see can hurt you, so it's very helpful to clean the windshield, the windows, and mirrors. Also, make sure your mirrors are properly directed. Before turning the ignition switch, make sure that the parking brake is set and the transmission selector button is in neutral. Turn the ignition switch to the on position and check the wait to start light. When the light goes off, rotate the switch and start the engine. As soon as it starts, reduce your RPMs and immediately check your oil pressure. If none is indicated within 15 seconds, shut off the engine and find the problem. If the engine will not start after 30 seconds of starter rotation, switch off the ignition for a few minutes and allow the starter to cool off. After you have started the engine, let it idle at about 800 RPM for 5 or 6 minutes. While the engine is warming and building up air pressure, check your gauges, switches, and controls for proper operation. Check the turn signals, lights, and windshield wipers. And adjust and lock your seat into the most comfortable position. Be sure to fasten your seatbelt. Before you release the parking brake, the air pressure gauge must read at least 60 PSI. Apply the foot brake. 
The brakes are released by pushing down on the yellow parking brake button to your right. After releasing the parking brakes, shift the transmission from neutral to the appropriate drive gear and you're ready to move out. For more information on the proper gear selection and use of gears for engine braking, check the Kalmar Ottawa Operator's Manual. Do not use starter fluid on an electronic engine. Check your engine operator's manual for details. No matter what the problem, never try to start a Kalmar Ottawa by pushing or pulling. It just can't be done. Failure to disconnect the drive shaft or raise the drive wheels before pushing or towing could seriously damage the transmission. Before attempting a change of direction, bring the vehicle to a complete stop before moving the shift selector. Your T2 gear shift selector has no P or park position. Every time you leave the cab, shift to neutral and set the parking brake. Never try to park while you are in a forward or reverse gear. Now let's go find a trailer. The following procedures are highly recommended, but are provided only as a guide. Check your company procedure manual for specific guidelines. Particularly, if your Kalmar Ottawa T2 is equipped with any optional equipment, not specifically covered in this video. And keep in mind that it is the operator's responsibility to be sure that proper trailer moving procedures and practices are followed. Also, remember there is only one seat in your T2, so no riders are allowed. Before backing up to the trailer, be sure that the fifth wheel is in the full down position. And be sure that the fifth wheel jaws are in the open or unlatched position. Depress the unlatch palm button just to make sure. While backing, line the T2 up to the front of the trailer by centering the fifth wheel to the center line of the trailer. Make sure that the tail of the fifth wheel is below the bottom of the trailer. Slowly back under the trailer until the entire fifth wheel top plate disappears under the trailer. With your foot firmly on the brake treadle and the tractor shift selector in neutral, move the boom control lever to the up position and raise the trailer until the trailer support is just off the ground. Do not raise the trailer any more than a few inches to provide clearance between the trailer landing gear and the ground at this step. After you have obtained adequate ground clearance at the trailer landing gear, place the shift selector in reverse, release your foot from the brake treadle, and back firmly into the kingpin until you feel full engagement. Remember, the latching jaws in the fifth wheel must be fully in the open position before attempting kingpin engagement. Place the transmission shift lever into a forward drive gear and give a tug at the kingpin to ensure positive lock of the jaws around the kingpin. Be prepared to stop if the fifth wheel jaws have not fully latched to avoid pulling out from under the trailer and dropping it. Place the shift selector in the neutral position and raise the boom using the boom control lever. Raise the fifth wheel to the necessary height to maintain ground clearance while towing the trailer to the new location. Be aware of potential overhead damage to a trailer if it is raised too high. Once proper trailer height is reached, apply the tractor parking brake. Now hook both the trailer emergency and service lines to the trailer, blue and red air lines, and plug in the trailer electrical cable. With the brake treadle fully applied, push in both the trailer air supply, red, and the parking brake control, yellow. This will charge the trailer air supply and release the trailer spring parking brakes. After the tractor air system is fully charged, shift into the proper gear and release pressure on the foot-operated brake treadle. Allow the vehicle to roll a very short distance and then depress the brake treadle again to stop the vehicle. This procedure will ensure that the service brakes on the trailer are working properly. Now we are ready to spot the trailer. Once the trailer is relocated and the vehicle combination is completely stopped, shift into neutral and pull out on the trailer air supply control, red. This will apply the trailer parking brakes only. The parking brake control, yellow, should remain in with the tractor parking brake released. This will allow the T2 to move gradually as the trailer is lowered. Using the boom control lever, lower the trailer until the trailer supports are resting completely on the ground. Set the emergency parking brake control. Then, disconnect and store the airlines and electrical cable. Now, 
release the tractor emergency parking brake control. Depress and hold the fifth wheel unlatch control valve as you slowly pull away from the trailer. Once the fifth wheel is completely clear of the kingpin, release the fifth wheel unlatch control and go to the next trailer. There are just a few more things we want you to keep in mind. Your T2 is designed to move trailers for generally short distances and in somewhat confined areas. It is not designed to operate the same as a road tractor and shouldn't be driven like one. When hauling a trailer in the yard, speed should not exceed 15 miles per hour. And since your T2 hauls loads with the front of the trailer in an elevated position, the load is not as stable as in road tractor operations. So slow down into and during the turn. If you are driving a DOT EPA certified model, you must manually lock the kingpin locking jaws before operating on a public road. And you have to manually unlock the kingpin locking jaws before you can unhook the trailer. See your operator's manual for details. Professional drivers know their tractor and have learned to operate their T2 with no pain to themselves and no strain on the tractor or the load. Thanks for viewing this video. Practice driving and spotting trailers. Know your truck inside and out. Take it slow. Think safety first, and you'll be a successful Kalmar Ottawa T2 operator.